I just want to know if this thing is working or not. It's going to be a little difficult trying to read the, the actual MeChat stuff with this thing in my hand, but like, do I sound better? Nope. I can't tell the difference. I don't know. I don't know if it's on or not. So I'm just going to keep, we're just going to keep going. You know, we're just going to do what we do what we do what we do because we're doing it right. My sister got that Brett song stuck in my head. <laughs> hey, boo, and welcome to my channel. I'm Ant. If you're new around these parts, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join this beautiful ass gang because we are always volunteering and we are always welcoming and you, you just belong. Okay, you clicked on this video to watch this me chat series. You just belong. Anywho, we are on part nine, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, we're on part nine. And yes, I know I sound nasally. It is because I am sick yet again. Where this cold came from, I don't know. But whoever gave it to me, let's get it on. Let's square up. I can't be sick and pregnant at the same time. It's I'm already going through enough. I lost my phone. I found my phone. Anywho, Boo Boo could choose. Go ahead and grab a snacks, grab your drink, and let's go ahead and jump into this next part of our Me Chat series with our delicious and fine ass guardian angel who is also a pain on our butt, Philippa Lourdes. That's YouTube. That's that's not Me Chat. Don't I look cute today? I think I look really cute. <laughs> I posted it on my tickety tack, so if you want to, you can go watch it. I'll leave the link down below for you. But it's so cute. And because of it, I have that song stuck in my head from Krishan in uh, Mabu. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, I'm Mr. Take your bitch. Take her for a trip. You know? Anyways, um, yay, Halloween special <laughs> that I completely missed out on. We have two days and 10 hours left. So I will be coming back to the shop. I get paid in two days. It's a sign. All right. So Philip hit us up and he said, Sorry for leaving the conversation the way I did. I was kind of shocked you did that, to be honest. Yeah, not my finest moment. It really must have hurt you that I said I wasn't into you. Um, Where's the ego a little bit? It just proves my theory, though. And he's got something to say! Ah! If it's another spoiler, I swear to God, I'm gonna be so fucking pissed. Stay out of my bookshelf! You really think I left the conversation because you said I wasn't your type? Please, darling. I don't have a fragile ego. But hey, you're lost for not being interested in someone as sexy as moi. Fine, if I rolled my eyes any further, I'd be able to see my past. Because what is he talking about? You don't have to lie about your feelings, my love. We know they're there and growing. Let him be. So we're gonna laugh because he feels like being in a silly, goofy mood. We're gonna laugh. Be humble, man. Yes, I totally believe you. Yep, totally believe you. Totally. I only speak the truth. Then you need some humbling. I'm already the humblest. <laughs> he must think we're new around these parts. Yeah, I think he really does. You know, I can potentially be interested in you if I get to know you better. Drop the facade, bro. It's not like that's my goal. So you'll say no if I ask you out right now. Right now, in this moment, you'll say no? Yeah, there's no need to do that. I'm not interested in dating you. But what if I only ask you out as a friend? Huh? Because that's how it starts. We're just kicking it. We're just hanging out. Old school. Like besties do, you know? And the next thing you know, I do my little cute self stuff. Things that I do. And then you can't keep your hands off of your girl. I'm not hard to fall for. <laughs> just fall for the trap, baby. Just fall for the trap. You're bound to anyway. Why would you want that? I just think we should get to know each other better. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? You're my guardian angel. I want to be friends with you and get to know you. But what if you got to know me and actually fell for me? I mean, you said it yourself that you could potentially be interested. I was just teasing you. I was just teasing. Remember in the last episode where I was like, I'm interested, but not really. Interested as in curiosity, not interested as in serious, you know? You know what it never was? That serious. It was never that serious. Quite frankly, We'll never be that serious. Never. Don't worry. I will get any ideas. You're so confident in that. You made it clear you're not really interested in me, so that's a turn off. 
It really is though. Like answer to a question nobody asked. Once a guy tells me they're not interested in me, it's like a light switch. I just flipped the switch. You don't like me? Okay, cool. What now? I have no problem going on the rest of my day, the rest of my life, not wondering, what if? No, no, no. You said you didn't want me. You'll never get that opportunity again. And you'll stop teasing me and implying I'm in and implying I'm into you? Okay, I'll stop, Mr. Sensitive. I can't guarantee you won't fall for me though. Boy. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. Palm to the face. I swear, nothing can knock that ego down. I'm just making things clear. Pick me up tomorrow at noon. At noon? This is a daytime date. Yeah, it is. Okay, I shine during the daytime too anyway. <sighs> I'll pick you up tomorrow at noon. Okay, so that's gonna be our part nine for this series. I really hope I'm saying the right number. I just, I just, it's been a minute brain fog and stuff, you know? But uh, that's gonna be our part nine. My snack is the children's candy I stole from Halloween. You need to leave. It's what moms do, okay? Don't sit there and judge. Get off your high horse. I don't have a drink though, so. It's cool. Okay, so now that we are back from our intermission, <laughs> not the healthiest, say that right now, we're gonna get ready for our date with Philip Alertis. <laughs> Girl, mm, the yiddies are yiddying. That's clearly the one we're gonna go with. We're not even gonna skim through the rest of them. This is just... She's so pretty. She's so pretty. Confirm. Let's go. We're going on our date. Look at this fine as At exactly noon, Philip arrives to pick you up from your place and you decide to take charge of the date by leading the way. So your idea of a friendly date is just walking around in circles? I expected something a little more original. We're not walking around in circles, we're walking in a line. We're not a dog, we're not chasing our tails here. I can't tell, all the streets look exactly the same. Can you stop being snarky for a second and just enjoy the little things? You also haven't said a single word since I picked you up. I was just figuring you was enjoying the silence. <gasps> and we got some gems. We got some gems. And we got some gems. And you're dressed way too nicely for a friendly date. When I saw you like that, I really didn't expect you to just want us to walk around. Oh, there's a compliment in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Why is my nose itch? Seriously, why so much effort? What do you mean effort? This is how I dress. I dress cute. Not today. This is damn near a moo moo. But uh, you know, no, typically, normally, um, on some, you know, no, it's definitely not how you regularly dress. Maybe you're just now paying attention. He continues walking without responding and fixes his eyes ahead. A faint chuckle escapes your lips at his reaction. Let's go this way. You motion towards the crosswalk and he obediently follows your lead. As you guide him, a vivid vision suddenly flashes through your mind, capturing your attention and that fleeting moment. You see him hunched over you. His white wings, sh his wings are not white. In this picture, in this moment, they are not white. They're like a maroon burgundy kind of color. You can see him hunched over you, his white wings shining brightly around you, as if he's protecting you from something. Experience the vision in full or ignore the vision. No, we're not ignoring that. We're going to experience it in full. Are you crazy? Are you mad? Watch out! As you steady yourself finding support in his presence, you lock eyes with him, a profound connection forming between you. The intensity of the moment amplifies as the car that nearly collided with you comes to a sudden halt, causing a surge of relief to wash over you. Were we almost in an anime scene? That serial killer white van? You know what I'm talking about? Was that almost us? With a gaze that speaks volumes, you meet Philip's eyes, conveying a mixture of gratitude, astonishment, and a newfound understanding. Though transpiring solely within the realm of your mind, the vividness of the scene engulfs you, making it feel as if you are living through it in the present moment. Are you alright? I am. Thank you, Philip. Your heart quickens its pace, the rheumatic thumping echoing within your chest as his gentle touch grazes your cheek. 
locking in a gaze that transcends the present. A depth of emotion passes between you, unspoken yet pal 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 pal. Is this another word I can't say? Oh my God! I learn new things every day. Pal palpable palpable. Skip. Though the sentiments you experience differ from your current reality, they envelop you as if they are truly yours, invoking a sense of reminiscence or a forgotten connection. You notice a stark contrast between his current appearance and the imagery that unfolds before you. His wings, unlike your present form, exude a distinct radiance, captivating your attention with their ethereal beauty. Clad in attire that is vibrant and striking, it bears no resemblance to the familiar wardrobe of the current Philip. Suddenly, the vividness of the scene fades away as a familiar voice calls out to you, pulling you back to reality. Because, bitch, we were daydreaming like nobody's business. We, we were saved. Apparently, he turned into Captain save a Earth to Ant. You looked possessed right there. I had a vision. How is that possible? I don't know, but... I saw you jumping in front of a moving car to save me. It felt like it had happened before. You're talking nonsense. I'm not. It felt so real, like it happened to us. Well, I don't know what you saw, but it did, that, that didn't happen. Now let's keep moving. Even though he attempts to divert the conversation, the impression of what you see lingers within you, as if it has already unfolded in the realms of time. Doubt creeps in, and yet a tantalizing thought emerges. What if it wasn't a glimpse of the past, but rather a glimpse of the future? Can it be possible that I possess the ability to perceive events that have yet to transpire? Because that would be fire. I'm feeling a little Dr. Seuss today, so <laughs> bear with me. Have you ever worn super bright clothing? No. What about your wings? Have they always been the color they are now? Yeah. An annoyed expression creases Philip's face as he gazes at you. What you saw was nonsense. But maybe it's the future. Maybe I can predict the future. Humans don't have powers. What if I'm not human? Hmm? Do you ever think about that? What if I'm not? What if I'm not? Hmm? Then you're the la- <laughs> Rude! Rude! Then you're the lousiest non-human ever. Har har. <laughs> you roll your eyes and laugh sarcastically. A sigh escapes Philip's lips, and a sudden wave of calm washes over his features, replacing the previous hint of annoyance. Maybe I can ask you something now. Go ahead. How many exes did you have? I didn't count only one. I didn't count... Or only one. If we're talking about in all seriousness, personally, personally, I would really only count one. One. Just one. The librarian? Yeah. A flicker of jealousy seems to flash in Philip's eyes, but you quickly dismiss it as your imagination, unsure if it is real or a mere illusion. Okay. You can ask me something again now. Oh, we're getting somewhere. What's the best date you've ever been on? No, 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 to ask. No, 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 no. What is the best date you've ever been on? I can think of one, and I can barely remember that one. You know, alcohol adult things. Al the alcohol being the adult thing. Um, we're just gonna. What's the best date you've ever been on? Mm, we went on a spontaneous road trip. Who's we? He lets out an awkward chuckle and averts his gaze. Um, me and my partner. I can't imagine you in a relationship. It didn't last long. So where did you go? We had no clue where we were going. We were driving and then suddenly we stumbled upon some hot springs. It was tucked away in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by lush greenery and cascading waterfalls. That sounds absolutely freaking beautiful. We took a dip and you can imagine what else we did. <laughs> yes, yes, Philip, we can. I think we all can. As he winks at you, you can't help but feel a flutter of awe, realizing that whoever this person is, they were extraordinarily lucky. Despite being caught up in your emotions, you quickly shake off the feeling. You seem flustered. Nah, I'm not. You are. Seriously, a little implication can make you flustered this much. You must be a virgin. Just because I'm a Virgo does not mean I am a virgin, okay? Because I can be a...
In response to his laughter, you playfully roll your eyes. Give it a rest. As he boldly steps closer, his finger gently glides down your arm, causing a shiver to dance across your skin. You're imagining yourself there, aren't you? Afraid of the intensity that may arise if your eyes meet, you refrain from lifting your gaze. Stop trying to get a rise out of me. It was you who asked me the question, though. With a tender touch, he delicately lifts your chin, urging you to look at him. Don't do that. Let's keep walking. Overwhelmed by a sudden rush of panic, you hasten your steps, walking ahead of him. The sound of his laughter echoes in the distance, adding a touch of amusement to the tense atmosphere as he trails behind you. I'm starting to understand why you like librarians. Oh, really? Why? Because they're boring. Okay. 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 <laughs> what is this date? We're just walking around. You said you didn't want a real date. That doesn't mean I want to just walk around. Don't worry, we're walking towards a destination. We are actually going somewhere. We could have driven there or I could have flown you there. But the city, you get to see the city. This way, you get to spend more time with me. Mm, but the city. But you get to see the city more this way. You know, I am a scenery kind of gal. I may not look like it, but I can hold my little viewer too, you know? I've seen enough of it. Come on, ask me something again. Do you really want to do this again? Yeah. Okay. What's your ideal partner? Tall, a really good cook, absolutely hilarious. Can tolerate my overthinking and lack of patience. Loves horror movies. Kind of a nerd like I am. Can sit down and just chill, watch anime or play video games or, you know, again, horror movies because that's, <laughs> that's my jam. Not too sensitive because I do poke and I'm a little mean. But, you know, it's all in love. My love language is just to be mean. I don't think he was asking me personally. Anyways, you're asking about my love life again, which is interesting. I'm a curious guy. Well, to answer your question, I like bad guys. Not really, no. Bad guys are annoying. You always gotta tell them something. They might embarrass you in public. It's just, I would just rather not, you know? I'm not 16 anymore. It's not worth saving someone who doesn't want to save themselves, so no. My ideal partner is someone who doesn't annoy me. That's the one. The bar's in hell. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Philip. Actually, the bar is in the sky. Lots of things annoy me. That is true. That's true. That is very true. Lots of things do annoy me. But let's keep walking because we're almost there. As you continue strolling, you eventually arrive at a charming cafe, a spot filled with nostalgic memories from your youth. Although it holds a special place in your heart, you prefer to keep this sentimental attachment to yourself for now, not yet willing to reveal its significance to Philip. This date has been a really PG-13 so far. I, I would hope so. This is a whole YouTube video thing going on. We don't need no wicked whims going on. Didn't we agree that it's a get to know better date? I guess. <sighs> this place is the opposite of sensual. And friendship is the opposite of sex too. Who would have known? Debatable. Just pick a table and shut up. His eyes scan the surroundings before he confidently guides you to a cozy table tucked away in a charming corner of the cafe. Hello. What can I get you? Philip pursues the... Philip goes over the menu. <laughs> Attentively before making a selection. I'll have a cappuccino and a slice of this fruity cake. He points at the cake he wants and the waitress nods. And for you? A piece of chocolate cake and a, ma a matcha latte. A slice of tangy lemon tart and a zesty iced lemon. Ooh, I don't like tart, but pregnancy will have you craving some weird things and a lemon tart actually sounds really good right now. Okay, I'll be back shortly with your order. After a little while, your orders are served and the conversation flows effortlessly between you. Jokes and laughter fill the air and you can't help but notice that Philip steals glances at your cake, fixes his eyes on the sweet treat. You only took one bite of your cake. Why is that? Mm, I just enjoy talking to you. That's the biggest lie you said so far. No, no, no. The biggest lie he said so far is that my cooking won't shit. I still remember that and I take it personally. You wound me. You're staring at my cake like you want to devour it. Do you want a piece? I'm not. You totally are. Feed him your cake. 
tell him to stop. You want a piece so bad? Here, I'll feed you my cake. Hey, all you gotta do is ask. <gasps> and we got some gems. We got some gems. And we got some gems. Come here. Noticing Philip's lingering gaze on your cake, you extend a kind gesture and offer him a slice. A spark of delight lights up his face as he eagerly takes a bite, savoring the sweetness with evident enjoyment. Mmm. Okay. That's definitely better than this stale cake I ordered. Give me another bite. <laughs> as you share another mouthful of cake with Philip, you can't help but notice the way in which he centrally takes the fork into his mouth. His eyes lock on yours. The sounds of pleasure escaping his lips and a wave of heat coursing through your body, igniting a fiery sensation deep within. Delicious. His lips moisten as he delicately runs his tongue along the... <laughs> Out of the gutter. Out of the gutter! Runs his tongue along them, drawing your attention to the mesmerizing motion. Your focus lingers on the tantalizing movement, arousing thoughts of the mirrored possibilities that his skill. <laughs> Apparently, we on the same page. That his skilled tongue. <laughs> Don't explore. Order something else. But your cake is just so tempting. No, order your own. This is mine. He listens to you and orders the same cake as you. The waitress brings it over and smiles at you both. You two make a lovely couple, I must say. <laughs> Girl, that is not my... We're not a couple. Yeah, we're just friends. Oh. Sorry for assuming. Enjoy the cake. As the waitress awkwardly retreats, you and Philip exchange a meaningful glance that evokes a peculiar fluttering sensation in the pit of your stomach. With each bite of the new cake, a genuine delight dances across its face, prompting an involuntary giggle from you. What's funny? How much you enjoy that cake? I need you to admit that you that that I have impeccable taste. I just can you do that for me, Philip? Can you just admit that for me? Can you just do it? Shut my soul up. Never. He takes another bite and you smile at him. I need you to stop looking at me like that. Like what? <laughs> You're the one with the nasty, messy eyes over there, start with the lickety lick of the lips. Like what? Like I'm cute. Well you are. You want me to deny that? I can't do that. Yes, you are an attractive man. Angel being, you know? I'm not gonna lie. A shudder runs through him as if he's genuinely repulsed by the thought of being cute. And you can't contain the laughter that bubbles up inside of you. You're adorable. You're such a drama queen. You're adorable. Nobody ever said that to me in my entire life. There's a first time for everything. You wink at him and he rolls his eyes. As Philip takes another delectable bite of his cake, you can't help but notice a smudge of frosting adorning his lip. Clean the frosting off his lip, laugh and point out the frosting. I'm gonna clean you up. Cause this ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. This ain't nothing but a game to me. You have something, huh? Right here. You reach out and gently wipe the frosting away, your finger grazing his skin. A mischievous grin spreads across your face as you bring your finger to your lips and centrally lick off the sweet residue. The gesture captures Philip's attention, and his gaze becomes fixated on your lips. You could have used a napkin. I could have. Could have. Could have, would have, should have. This was more fun. As your eyes lock, a knowing understanding passes between you, and you can sense that he secretly enjoys your gestures, despite any dismissive remarks. <laughs> it's a game, baby. And we're winning. Over time, you've come to recognize that his sarcastic words serve as a protective shield, concealing his true thoughts and emotions. But you also learn how to navigate through this witty, through his witty defenses, unveiling the genuine sentiments hidden beneath the surface. Thanks, I guess. You know, I'm almost done with my piece. Yeah, I am. You barely even touched yours. Drawing nearer, Philip fixes his gaze on your lips, intensifying the charged atmosphere between you both. Your heart races at the thought, but then you notice his eyes shifting downward towards your cake and the, his fork inching closer. Oh, no, you won't. In a playful attempt to protect your cake, you swat his fork away <laughs> to your astonishment. It accidentally goes flying through the air and lands in Philip's hand, causing an unexpected injury. <laughs> my bad my bad you are shocked to see actual blood oozing from his hand but 
but how? You're bleeding. How are you bleeding? A mere human harming a celestial being should be impossible, yet you managed to do it on a complete accidente. To your surprise, instead of panicking, Philip just chuckles. Once again, you've managed to wound me. And that, my dear loves, it's a good thing I got carpet. That, my good loves, is the ending of our part 10, 9 and 10 of our Vichat Philip Calzordis series thing going on over here. I thought it was super cute, super funny, super charming, very much annoying. Okay, let's let's keep it a buck. He was annoying me in the first half. He had me in the first half. He was very annoying. But you know, you get to grow and you get to love him and you uh, uh, like, get too strong, like him. Um, we might just jump Back to our good old Cedric. See what's going on over on those parts. Or we might go ahead and, and dibble dab with some Tamora because he back too. And I, we got two good men. The two good ones. Even though I, I, I messed up earlier in this series and totally forgot about Tamora. But it is what it is. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and like me know you like this video. I hit that like button if you're new around these parts. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join this beautiful ass gang. Because who wouldn't want to be a beautiful ass person? And while you're over there, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified any and every time that we I, uh, that I upload because clearly I just be posted whenever. Don't forget to follow me on my socials and I will catch your beautiful ass next time. I really hope this video comes out good with this mic. I'm gonna be so mad if I can't tell the difference.